Illinois' new criminal justice reform law, known as the Safety Act, is set to go into effect on January 1st, but it's facing a lot of criticism. The new law would eliminate cash bail in Illinois. Advocates of the reform say it's unfair for low-income defendants to have to wait in jail because they can't afford bond, while opponents say if passed, it would allow criminals to be set loose in their communities. Here with us this morning to break down the Safety Act is Audra Wilson, the president and CEO of Shriver Poverty and Law Center. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I know uh, Kim Fox has been engaged in, in reform and uh, people are getting out on bail that maybe wouldn't have a few years ago, a number of years ago. Mm -hmm. Are we seeing those people not show up for court? Are we seeing those people committing crimes? No, and there's no empirical data that's showing that. The, the concern that we have at the, the poverty law, with the Shriver Center on Poverty Law, is that we do not want people to be criminalized simply because they're living in poverty. And the presumption that somehow, because you're poor, that you are predisposed to crime or that you're going to skip town or skip bail or, or you're a danger to society is really irresponsible. And it has some really racial overtones as well. So that's the angle at which we have been supporting this bill, because there's no reason why people should be languishing in jail. Um, remember, they're accused. They have not been tried. They have not been convicted. And in Cook County alone, about one third of the people who have been um, convicted, or excuse me, have been accused of a crime end up being acquitted or having the, the charges dropped. Mm. So there's a lot of hype and there's a lot of fear, but it certainly coincides with what's happening politically. We're also concerned because we see a lot of these, these commercials, we hear a lot of the rhetoric, and even to the extent that there are some concerns about um, safety and the, the category of, of crimes for which you know, there should be bail or not bail, that's a discussion that we need to have. It shouldn't be on a commercial. It shouldn't be uh, likened to a movie. It shouldn't show imagery of people you know, with, with predators out in the street. It's extraordinarily irresponsible, and it really harkens back to a very darker time in our past. Let's talk about some of the things that the opponents have a problem with that maybe, I don't know if things need to be tweaked or if there's talk about being tweaked before January 1st, like this idea is that some forcible felonies for like second-degree murder or kidnapping suspects, uh, they might not have a detention hearing because of the way the law defines a flight risk, or um, does that need to be changed? Or, you you know, is there a, is there, if you don't post a bail, is there any incentive not to come back if you don't have money on the line? Talk about those things. That's what critics say. Sure. So obviously, you've had a lot of criminal uh, defense attorneys that speak with more specificity about the bill. What I can say is this: judges still have the discretion to determine whether or not there should be um, bail that's uh, issued here. So if if there is a flight risk, if there is a concern about public safety, they haven't lost their discretion in that sense. But remember, bail is not a punishment. It's not not meant to to um, to keep people uh, in jail. What it's meant to do is to assure that people will show up for their trial and for uh, pretrial proceedings. That's all it is. So we shouldn't even be thinking of it in a sort of punitive way. Not to mention the fact that a lot of people aren't concerned. For example, where you have, let's say, the Kyle Rittenhouse who who shot, and this is not an accusation, actually shot and killed two people in Wisconsin and had his bail crowdfunded and was released. Or that we have people who are accused of sexual offenses who may legitimately have committed those crimes or are out in the streets, but because they've been able to, to post bail, um, then they're able to walk free, and no one's concerned about this. But so, this gives some discretion to the judges to be able to actually look at the case and determine, is this something that for which bail should be granted or not granted, which is something that doesn't happen in those other cases. What are your thoughts about something like drugs, which some judges may see as non-violent offense, but others say, well, drugs are a violent world and, and, and is, leads, leads to violence. Is someone who is arrested on drugs, should they be held on bail, held well, without bail? Again, the issue is you're being accused of a crime. And that's, that's, that's the, at the core of this. So you're accused of a particular crime. You haven't been tried as yet. So we don't know what the circumstances are. Is there any empirical data one way or the other? You said there's no empirical data showing that these people are out committing crimes when they're, when they're free and they are showing up. Is, is, there, is there data that supports that? 
that that they're committing crimes when they're no. You say that there is no there is no data that shows that they're committing. Is there data showing that they don't commit crime? Is there any data at all? I guess is sure. my question. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> You'll have places like the um, University of Chicago Crime Lab and others that actually analyze and research this. It's not to say that there's not data out there that talks about these trends, but rather what's happening is you're seeing the rhetoric suggesting and not yeah. using this information to say that there is a predisposition. If you, we see violent criminals, we see what, these images on TV, and these are the individuals that will be let free, you know, if we do not post brain allow them to be uh, post bail. Right. All right, for more information, you can visit povertylaw.org. I appreciate you joining us this morning. Great, thank you so much.